Regulation has always been and will always be a driving force in the financial advice industry. I'm joined today by Mary Shapiro, who as former chairwoman of the SEC really spearheaded financial advisor regulation. So Mary, welcome. Thank you, it's nice to be here. Thank you. So listen, the, one of the things I wanted to ask you is about 40% of advisors are, have never been examined by the SEC. From your experience, what is so difficult about getting to those advisors for the SEC? Well, this has been a perennial problem at the SEC, um, certainly during my tenure, but even predating that, the ability of the agency to really get their arms around advisors um, has, has really been a challenge. So I think there are a few reasons. One is the sheer numbers. There are about 12,000 advisors out there um, with $62 trillion in assets under management. So the scope and the size of, of the industry is, is big. Um, the other issue is complexity that's increased a lot over the last few years because of new products and the use of derivatives has made it um, more difficult for the agency to tackle it. So I think um, it's not a lack of will by any means. It really is just the size of the responsibility and the lack of sufficient resources at the SEC to really do devote to advisor oversight. And that's why you've seen the agency start to explore some creative things like potentially a self-regulatory organization for advisors. 50% of broker-dealers are examined every year. 10% of advisors are examined every year. The difference is the presence of an SRO, FINRA, on the broker-dealer side. One of the other issues they're looking at is the potential to use a third-party compliance review, much like we did for the custody rule when I was chairman, um, as a way to get some better coverage of the advisory industry without the SEC having to use its own resources to do that. But it, it's an important issue, and this is a high-risk area for investors. And as more and more investors enter retirement, and the stakes are higher when something goes wrong with the advisor, it's going to become a more and more important issue. Mary, one of the things that Investment News has written about is the role that partisan politics within the SEC has played in making it more difficult for rules and regulations to get passed. Can you talk a little bit about that? Has that changed? Sure. Well, you know, Washington is just more politicized than ever in my experience. And I was a regulator for nearly 30 years, so I have a good long time frame of observation of the political process. And I, I would say this. The structure of the SEC, the CFTC, the Federal Trade Commission, a number of the agencies is actually designed to create political diversity. There are five commissioners appointed by the President, confirmed by the Senate. No more than three can be from the same political party. And the theory behind that is that the diversity of views would lead to better results. Um, and, and historically, I think that that was the case. You got those different perspectives. People compromised. They were pr pragmatic and you got a result. As Washington just generally has become more politicized, uh, the agencies are having a harder time reaching that middle of the road pragmatic result. And as a result, rulemaking is slowed down. Sometimes enforcement is slowed down. Sometimes it's very, very difficult to reach a consensus um, decision. And it's, it really requires that those five commissioners want to compromise and are willing to compromise in order to move the agenda forward. And, and that's just harder in today's political environment. So I have to ask you, what was it like to be the first female to be named the permanent chair of the SEC? You know, I get asked that question a lot. And I, I really didn't think about it that way. You know, I'd served at the commission earlier in my career from 88 to 94 as a commissioner. And I thought of it much more as I was going back to an agency that I really loved and I believed in, but at a time that was really fraught with an extraordinary number of challenges. So I thought more about what a pivotal time this is for anybody to be SEC chair. And I didn't really think so much about, about it being, about my being the first woman chairman, to be perfectly honest. Great. So if you had one piece of advice to give to a young woman entering the financial services industry today, what would that be? It would, it's pretty simple. Don't compromise your ethics ever. Great. Mary Shapiro, thank you very much. Thank you. It's nice to see you. For Investment News, I'm Fred Gabriel. <laughs>